On June 8, 1949, George Orwell published his book, 1984. The book follows a man by the name of Winston and shows his life living under the rule of a tyrannical government known by the nickname Big Brother. Big Brother is watching is a phrase often used throughout the story to describe the government watching and monitoring the citizens' every move. While the story of 1984 may be fictional, government's monitoring and watching civilians isn't, which brings us to our story tonight. On this episode, we will take a closer look at the mysterious Isdale woman, her shocking death, and the speculation of her shady ties to big governments. Thank you for tuning in, and enjoy tonight's broadcast of the scary, strange, and outright odd show. And remember, Big Brother is watching. On the afternoon of November 29th, 1970, a professor and his two daughters were hiking the foothills of Norway in an area known as the Isdalian Valley. Upon their hiking, they found a burned, naked female body hidden among some rocks and in an area popularly known as the Death Valley. What was unusual, besides being a burned body, was the items that were scattered around it. For instance, found were a dozen pink sleeping pills, a packed lunch, an empty cord of St. Halivaird's liquor, two plastic bottles that smelled strongly of gasoline, and a silver spoon with the monogram filed off. After even further investigation, investigators also found a burned passport. Now, an autopsy concluded the woman died from carbon monoxide poisoning. Her blood showed traces of at least 50 sleeping pills. Mm. Her neck was bruised, possibly by a blow. And get this, her fingerprints had been sanded away. Got me crazy, but it almost sounds like there's some form of foul play going on here. Police immediately launched a full-scale investigation, especially after these findings. They made composite sketches on the basis of witnesses' descriptions and the analysis of her body. These sketches were published in the media and circulated in many countries via the Interpol program. What exactly is the Interpol program? Up until learning about this story, I had no idea. Interpol, which is spelled I-N-T-E-R-P-O-L, stands for the International Criminal Police Organization, ICPO, or Interpol. And it is an intergovernmental organization facilitating international police cooperation between countries. Think of it like NATO, but a little bit smaller. Now, here's something else that was quite strange. They found two suitcases belonging to the woman at a train station in Bergen, Norway. In the lining on one, police discovered 500 Deutschmark, that was the currency that was used there. Among other things, they found clothing with all the identifying labels removed. A lotion with, you know, a prescription lotion with the doctor's name and date removed. 130 Norwegian kroner, which is the company that, or excuse me, the currency that was being used there in Norway. Silver spoon similar to what was found in the Isdalian Valley site. Partial fingerprints on a pair of sunglasses and some cryptic diary entries. Boy, can I only wonder what she was uh, keeping a secret in there. Police later concluded the entries were coded dates in places that the woman had visited. An Italian photographer's postcard was found in the woman's luggage. When police spoke with him, he said he'd given her a lift to and had dinner with her at Hotel Alexandra in Lowen. According to the photographer, the woman told him she was from a small town north of Johannesburg in South Africa, and she had six months to see Norway's most beautiful places. What the witness also added, uh, which, was, uh, which was a little bit odd, was that she seemed hesitant to have a conversation with him. Now, police learned that the Isdale woman, as she had been nicknamed by this point, 
had traveled around Norway and Europe with at least eight false passports. And authorities eventually concluded the woman committed suicide. Got me crazy, but I just don't buy that. Now, let's talk about the witnesses. The witnesses said that the woman wore wigs and spoke French, German, English, and Dutch. She had also stayed several nights in Bergen hotels and repeatedly changed rooms after checking in. One witness said that she overheard the woman talking to a man in a Bergen hotel. According to the witness, the woman said that in German, the Isdale woman stated, I am coming soon. But out of all the witnesses and the witness testimonies, this particular one has to be the strangest. A local man said he went to the police after recognizing the police sketch of her. He said that he told the officer that on November 24th, he was hiking with friends in the area when he encountered a woman and two black-coated men of quote-unquote foreign appearance. She was elegantly dressed in clothing that was not appropriate for the outdoors or for hiking, and her face was distorted by fear. As they passed each other, he said, she formed her mouth as if to say something, but appeared intimidated by the men who were following her. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. The 26-year-old said the policeman told him, forget her, she was dispatched. The case will never be solved. The young man waited for over 30 years before going public with the story. All of this leaves the question, who is the Isdale woman? Was she some sort of governmental agent? Or a woman who got tied up in the wrong place at the wrong time? Theories, theories, and theories have come out about this. What do you think? Those questions and many more are for you, the listener, to decide. Until then, thank you for listening to the Scary, Strange, and Outright Odd Show. I'm your host, Joseph Jordan, reminding you that the truth is always out there. <laughs>